from the University of Leicester in the United Kingdom. This is Glenn Fulcher with another issue of Language Testing Bites. In issue 29.1, we publish an article by Tan Jin and Barley Mike on the application of fuzzy logic to scoring performance tests. Tan is a PhD student and Barley Mike, assistant professor and director of the Centre for Enhancing English Learning and Teaching, Department of Curriculum and Instruction, in the Faculty of Education at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. In this article, they call their approach confidence scoring, and we were delighted when they agreed to join us on Language Testing Bytes to explain a little bit more about their research and its potential application to a field. Tan and Barley, thank you for agreeing to join us on Language Testing Bytes to talk about your article on confidence scoring in issue 29, one of the journal. Okay, thanks, Glenn. Thank you very much for inviting us to make this podcast. Hey, uh, Glenn, thank you. Um, we would also like to extend our thanks to the anonymous reviewers for their insightful comments and suggestions. Thank you. Well, thank you for that, and we'll, obviously the reviewers will definitely hear that, and, and, but we'll pass it on anyway. Ah, thank so, you. Yeah. Um, the starting point of, of your article is a recognition that in assessing speaking performances, raters find it difficult to distinguish between adjacent levels on a scale and that there's an overlap between different scales. Uh, can you briefly explain each of these problems for our listeners? Okay, sure. These two problems are actually related to the two elements of rating scales, uh, namely levels and scales. For example, we have level one, level two, level three, and we have grammar scale, we have vocabulary scale, and we may have content scale, if you like. Okay? In scoring a speaking performance, a rater first decides which level a candidate should be at, and then the rater assigns levels in terms of different scales. These levels on different scales are usually averaged to produce a final score. Um, however, it seems to be very difficult to actually locate a clear boundary between the adjacent levels. I mean, between level 1 and level 2, between level 2 and level 3, etc., etc. Raters experience the same problem when they are asked to give only one exact score to a candidate's spoken performance. This is a point a number of studies have also echoed in our field. It has been found to be very challenging for a reader to distinguish between adjacent levels, as I just mentioned, between level 4 and level 3, and between level 3 and level 2. This is a problem of indistinction between adjacent levels. Okay, next we come to the problem of an overlap between scales. When combining the scores on different scales to a final score, I mean an exact final score, Previous studies have also indicated that there is an overlap between scales. Uh, let me give you an example here. When we look at the content scale, we might judge how well a candidate is able to express their ideas with appropriate details. Um, however, if a candidate can't put across their ideas with sufficient detail in some way, it might also be because the candidate doesn't know the relevant words or how to pronounce and use the words. This overlap between scales shakes the foundations on which the averaging procedure in terms of calculating an exact final score are built. Uh, so, we conceptualize the two problems as fuzziness in scoring speaking performance. One is the indistinction between edges and levels. The other is the overlap between scales. Right, and you refer to the problems that you just described as fuzziness. And in this paper, you draw on fuzzy logic to model the problem. Uh, before we talk about the approach you and your colleagues have taken, can you first of all explain what fuzzy logic is and why you think it's relevant to the problems that you've identified? Okay, according to the Stan uh, Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, Fuzzy logic emerged as a proposal of fuzzy theft theory by Professor Lofizada in 1965. I'd first like to use a popular example here to briefly explain what fuzzy logic is. Okay, we may say a person is tall if their height is more than 180 centimeters. Otherwise, we'll say they are short. So we have defined the truth of tall as more than 180 centimeters. In traditional geologic, 
A statement is true or false, and an element either belongs to a set or it doesn't. Okay. So from the example of height, a person who is one hundred and seventy nine point nine nine centimeters is not considered to be tall. As in dual logic, we have no choice but to say this person is tall or short. Okay. But in fuzzy logic, we give degrees of truth ranging between zero and one. So a person who is one hundred and seventy nine point nine nine centimeters might be considered to be zero point nine tall, if you like.、Uh, as you can see, this is more reasonable. Okay, let's return to scoring speaking performance. Raters are required to assign an exact score to a candidate's performance based on the rating scales. So we can see that the assigning activity is crisp in nature. Because readers have no alternative but to say yes or no to a particular level, for example, level four, as described in the rating scales. However, there is no clear boundary between adjacent levels, as I just mentioned. So fuzzy logic tries to model the problem as to what degree a candidate performance belongs to a particular level. So finally, we use membership functions and the rule bases to solve the two problems of indistinction and overlap. We have all lined membership functions and the rule bases in our article, but I don't think I have the space to go into it here.、Uh, you can refer to Zimmerman's 2001 book on fuzzy set theory and its applications if you are interested in these two concepts. You may also know more from the book. Thanks for that explanation. So、uh, now we've done that. Let, let's come to the real heart of the paper,、uh, which is the notion of a confidence score.、Uh, would you tell us what a confidence score is、um, and how it's arrived at by a rater?、Uh, sure.、Um, confidence scores are awarded by raters based on the levels of certainty they have when they are match. They match candidate performances with descriptions of different levels on a scale. They may be absolutely sure, or they may be not sure. Okay, in scoring spoken performances, readers can use a score from one to ten to show they are scoring confidence in two adjacent levels.、Um, for example, they can give a score of three to level four and a score of seven to level three, meaning that they are more confident that level three is a correct level. But they feel that level four might be correct instead, or they can award a、uh, a score of four to level three and a score of six to level two, and the sum of confidence scores should be ten.、Uh, if the reader is very confident about which level the candidate should be at, the reader just assigns a score of ten to that level. Readers then award their confidence scores on different scales respectively. For example, the reader may、uh, may first assign confidence scores on the pronunciation scale, on the grammar scale, and then on the content scale. As you just mentioned, confidence scores are awarded by raters、uh, based on the level of certainty they have when awarding a score.、Um, perhaps you can say a little bit more about the notion of rater confidence and、uh, just how it features in your approach to scoring. I'm sure. Rater plays a very important role in scoring speaking performance.、Um, they actually have three roles, right? Number one, they have to interpret the rating scales. Number two, they have to compare the description of each of each level with the actual candidate performance. And of course, number three is they have to make decisions themselves. Scores are thus awarded to candidates based on rater judgment of candidates' performance. As a teacher educator. Um, I have been training teachers to score speaking performances. Although I provide detailed explanations about the rating scales as well as typical benchmark samples of each levels, teachers,、um, from my own experience, right, no matter how experienced they are, they might still find it very challenging to distinguish candidates' performance between adjacent levels. So I ask teachers participating in the scoring this question. What will you do if you have to make a decision when you find it difficult to distinguish between adjacent levels? The teachers' answers are generally that number one, they first hesitate between the adjacent levels, and number two, they then choose the level which they feel a bit more confident with. Although sometimes it's hard for them to say which level they actually feel most 
comfortable with, and most importantly, most confident with. Now, so this is where our rated confidence approach fits in. As a possible solution to these constraints, this hesitation that raters find themselves in when being forced to choose between levels. Rater confidence is based on the level of certainty raters have when making judgment as to which level a candidate should be at. To make confidence scoring more user-friendly, confidence scores are assigned using a sum of 10 to adjacent levels, for example, 4 and 6, 3 and 7, and so on. In addition to this decision-making aspect, raters do the same thing they have in the past. They read the rating scales and compare candidates' performance with the rating scales. The only difference rests on the decision-making bit. By adopting confidence scoring now, raters are allowed and are encouraged to reflect their confidence in matching a candidate's performance to one particular level by assessing confidence scores. Um, so if a rater finds it very difficult to distinguish between level 3 and level 4, the rater can give a score of 5 to level 3 and a score of 5 to level 4 as well. So if a rater feels absolutely sure that the candidate should be at level 4, the rater can give a score of 10 to level 4. So putting confidence into decision making, I think this is very important. And that is why we have named this approach confidence scoring. Thank you for that. And um, I think that, that brings us to you know, uh, the question about what you think the advantages of confidence scoring are uh, when using traditional rating scales to score speaking tests. Right. Um, as Tan mentioned earlier on, a number of studies have highlighted two problems with traditional scoring practices. The first one relates to the indistinction between adjacent levels and the second relates to kind of overlap between scales. Our confidence scoring approach acknowledges a rater's confidence in assigning scores of two adjacent levels to different scales. Um, we see this approach as a possible solution to the problems we just mentioned. Confidence scoring is actually based on and developed from traditional scoring. As I just said, if raters are very confident in their judgment, they just score speaking performance in the traditional manner by assigning a score of 10 to a particular level. Um, you can see that confidence scoring embraces traditional scoring, but it goes one step further because it provides a more flexible way of acknowledging raters' scoring confidence when making decisions. This is, I think, the first point I would like to make. Second, um, to deal with the overlap between scales, the confidence scores for different scales are, are processed into exact scores based on rules basis. So let me um, modify a little bit or let me explain a bit what um, rule basis are. Rule bases are established on the basis of specialist expertise. For example, if a candidate gets a level 3 for pronunciation, a level 4 for grammar, the composite quality of the pronunciation and grammar scales will be determined on the basis of specialist expertise, rather than simply as an average of the two levels. The rule bases make the best of human expertise in dealing with the sophisticated composite quality of speaking performances. Another point I would like to add is that confidence scoring asks raters to assign more numbers to show their confidence, rather than just give a single band score, as in the case with traditional scoring. For example, two candidates A and B are both given a level 3 under traditional scoring. Um, under confidence scoring, candidate A may be given a score of 4 in level 4 and a score of 6 in level 3. Candidate B may be given 1 in level 4 and 9 in level 3. As you can see, the co-candidates have the same band score using traditional scoring, but they have different scores under confidence scoring. It is better and it is possible to better discriminate between these two candidates using confidence scores. In this connection, well, we can see that confidence scoring may better discriminate candidates who would be at the same level when using traditional scoring. Last but not the least, as we put it in our article, 
confidence scoring is a new approach in scoring speaking confidence, uh, I mean speaking performance. We hope further studies can be done to provide more evidence for enhancing the confidence scoring process we have been pioneering. Well, I'm sure that we are going to hear a lot more about this in the future. Uh, thank you very, very much for joining us uh, on Language Testing Bytes to explain a little bit more about this fascinating area of research. I'm sure that it will be of great uh, value to our readers, uh, to the readers of our journal, uh, as they tackle your contribution to issue 291. Thank you very much for giving us this chance to say more about confidence scoring. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for listening to this issue of Language Testing Bytes. Language Testing Bytes is a production of the journal Language Testing from Sage Publications. You can subscribe to Language Testing Bytes through iTunes, or you can download future issues from ltj.sagepub.com or from languagetesting.info. So, until next time, we hope you enjoy the current issue of language testing.